In this episode, we'll look at how the RGB histogram can help you solve exposure problems. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you, of course, by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything cameras and lenses and audio gear and video cameras, you name it, Adorama has it. So make sure you check them out at Adorama.com. Well, I'm out here on this beautiful balcony just outside of my rental apartment in Paris, France, and these roses just bloomed a couple of days ago, and I thought I would take some pictures to send back to family. And when I took a picture, well, guess what? This rose showed up as a big red blob. So what's going on? Well, the answer has to do with something called color channels. Now, as we all know, way back in elementary school, we have what's called primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and you mix those in paint to get all the other colors. Well, in light, we have primary colors, but it's red, blue, and green, RBG, and you've probably seen it all over the place, SRGB, RGB, color spaces, things like that. That stands for red, blue, and green. And when we take a picture, those colors are recorded in what are called color channels, so the red, blue, and green color channels. So what was happening is when I took this photo, well, one of those color channels had some problems. So let's walk through that. So what I've done here is I have my camera set to fully um, in aperture priority mode. And I'm gonna go in here and shoot exactly as my camera is telling me to shoot. So I've got my rows here. And this is giving me a shutter speed of about a 24th of a second. And we can look at that and see that it is just that red blob that I was talking about. And when I go into the back of the camera and I'll show you my histogram here, well, it looks like everything is just fine. But the problem is my normal histogram is lying to me. What I need to do is see all of my different color channels on a histogram to see what the problem is. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my camera's menu and then I'm gonna go into where the histogram is and make sure I have this set to RGB histogram. And once I do that, changing it from the standard histogram to the RGB histogram, and I look at that same picture, wow! Now I can see that my red channel is clipped. It's way to the right side of that histogram and it's overexposed. That's why this is a red blob because all the details are just overexposed. So what I need to do is use exposure compensation to bring that red channel back into proper exposure. Now it looks to me, I'm just gonna guess this by experience, that that's about a stop and a half overexposed. So now I'm gonna go into manual mode. I'm gonna override what my camera says to do. And what I'll do here is, once again, I'm gonna look at uh, my meter, and then I'm going to underexpose by about a stop and a half and make sure I'm all in focus here. And now we'll take that picture again. Now I'm at 60th of a second. And now look at that. Now our red rose shows up as a red rose. And when we look at our histogram on the back of the camera, now you can see that that red channel has shifted to where the highlights are, which is where it should be. And that's what you need to do if you're getting those red blobs in your flower pictures or other environmental shots. If the red channel is out of whack, well, you just need to underexpose a little bit. And the only way that you're going to know that you need to underexpose, or technically you're exposing correctly, is if you have your RGB histogram turned on. You can't always trust that standard luminosity, uh, luminosity histogram. Now, once you do that, there's some other things that you might want to do. And so to explore that a little bit further, we're gonna hop into Lightroom. Now that we're in Lightroom, let me show you a couple of things. The first one here is that horrible picture that we took using the built-in meter of our camera. And we can see clearly on the histogram in Lightroom that it agrees with the camera that the red channel is way out of whack. Now, the second photo that I took, this is the one that I shot at a 60th of a second. You can see now that these reds, this red channel, they're coming right to uh, the highlight area, just to the right of the midtones. And after I got done filming, I shot one more exposure at a 90th of a second, and that placed my uh, red channel right here in the midtones. And I think that's the image that I like best. And that's a really good thing to do is if you're shooting something like this where you've got one of your color channels that's out of whack, shoot several exposures so you have something to work with. Now the other thing that I wanted to show you, and I think this is the most valuable tool for working with color, and that is the Color Checker Passport made by X-Rite. And what I did was I took my Color Checker Passport and I just quickly took a picture of that next to the rose. 
And then what I can do is bring that photo into Lightroom and use it as a tool for working with my color. Now, the, we don't have time to go into all the things that the Color Checker Passport can do, but I want to show you a couple of them that are really powerful really quickly. If I zip over to the Develop module, and I've zoomed in here on my Color Checker, notice that we have two rows of squares on this top panel here. These are for setting white balance. And notice that the top row has a little person and the second row has a little mountain and sun. Well, the top row is for working with portraits and the second row is for working with scenic photos. And what you can do is you can get your white balance picker and you can choose the square with the notch out of it and that is going to give you a neutral white balance. If you want to warm up the scene slightly, you click on one of the squares with the plus. If you want to cool it off, you click on one of the squares with the minus. Now these work a little bit differently. The portrait um, squares will warm up the scene so it's pleasing to skin tones. And the scenic photo squares will warm up or cool off the scene where it's pleasing to greens and reds and flowers and things like that. So that's why there's two different colors. So we have set really quickly a neutral white balance that's highly accurate. Now the other thing that I really like to work with is the ability to use these top colors here to work with the colors inside of my photo. Now notice we have red and orange and yellow and green and aqua, etc. And they match exactly with the colors over here on our HSL sliders, which means we can go in if we want to work with, let's say, luminance to take the luminance of this red flower down a little bit. I'll click on my little dot here and it gives me a tool where I can click on the red square in my color checker and notice I'm only affecting the red in this image. So I can bring that down just slightly. If I want to change the saturation, I click on saturation and I've got my little square. Again, I can boost or take my saturation down just using my little square. The other thing that's nice is if you're adjusting a lot of things in your hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, you can see what they're doing to the overall image just by looking at your color chart here. It's really nice. We don't have a lot of time to go into that. Actually, we don't have any time to go into that because I want to show you one more feature that I think is the most powerful feature of this tool, and that's its ability to let you create color profiles. Now, if we go to the very bottom of our develop module down to camera calibration. Notice there's this thing that says profile and by default it will say embedded or Adobe standard or it might match what you shot in your camera, vivid or scenic or something like that. Now watch what happens if I change this from embedded to Adobe standard. My colors change slightly. There's a shift in the reds and the blues. Now this might not show up because of the compression that YouTube puts on the video. So switching between these on my computer screen, I can see a big shift in the colors, but that might not show up in the video. So I highly recommend you take a photo of something that's really colorful that has reds and greens and blues and yellows and do this yourself. Click between your different color profiles to see how the colors are shifting and you might be surprised. What we want is highly accurate color and so the X-Rite Color Checker Passport allows us to create our very own profile. All you have to do is go up to File, Export with Preset, Color Checker Passport. It's going to ask you for a name and I'm going to say Red Rose and Save. It's going to evaluate this bottom portion of our passport to make sure our colors are absolutely accurate. Now you have to close and restart Lightroom once this is finished. It takes a couple of minutes. And so with the power of video editing, we're going to jump right to the finished product. Okay, now that it has finished and we can go down again to the bottom of our camera calibration. Over here it says Adobe Standard. Now look, Red Rose shows up. If I click that, now I have my calibrated color profile that's specific to my camera and lens. It's highly accurate. And then we can go in and do all the things that we need to do to make sure that this is absolutely the perfect color. And then we have, can use some other X-Rite tools to profile our printer and our screen. And so what we see is going to be exactly what we print. That is a topic for a future episode. 
Well, that's how color channels affect your exposure. So if you're getting red blobs or other issues in your photographs, turn on your RGB histogram so you have a full understanding of what your camera is capturing by color channel. You might be surprised what you learn. Well, don't forget that Adorama TV is absolutely free and we have new episodes every single day. So click the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And also check out the Adorama Learning Center. There are tons of articles and resources all about photography and videography and audio editing and tons of stuff. So check that out. It's absolutely free as well. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.